Hello and welcome to this lecture in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. So in the previous couple of lectures, we had looked at the problem of confinement. Uh, in this lecture and in the lectures that follow, we will take a new topic known as trusted execution environments. We first start off with saying how this particular trusted execution environments is different from confinement. Uh, so with confinement, we had looked at something like this. We had a system over here and within this particular system, we wanted to run a particular program and this program may be malicious. So what we needed to ensure was that we needed to ensure that this particular program is confined to a specific area. So we will start off with how trusted execution environment is different from confinement uh, or the topics that we have studied in the previous lectures. With the confinement, we had considered a system like this. We had considered that we have a system and in this system, we wanted to run a program which may be malicious. So what we did uh, through multiple techniques such as uh, lease privileges or uh, the OKWS or the software fault isolation, we had created confined areas which uh, executed the possibly malicious programs. So what the confined areas achieved was that any misbehavior is always restricted to this confinement. Now this is very different from trusted execution environment where we actually look at the inverse of this. With trusted execution environment, we have a very sensitive program that we want to run. It is so sensitive that we do not even trust the system that it is running on. So in other words, what we actually discuss in uh, these lectures is that we have a very sensitive program and you could consider this sensitive program for example, say a banking application or uh, this program is, wants to do encryption of very critical data and we want to actually run this particular program in an environment which is untrusted. So for example, you may have uh, malware or any other uh, malicious ac applications running in your system which has compromised the entire system. Now in spite of all of these malicious programs running on your system, we would still want to run our sensitive program without loss of any information. In spite of this untrusted system, we would want to run our sensitive program in a safe and secure manner. The heart of the problem is the ring architecture that is adopted by uh, all processors and operating systems. In the ring architecture, for example, in the x86 ring architecture, there are multiple rings, ring 0 to ring 3. The operating system runs in ring 0, which is the privilege code and it creates an environment for various applications to run. So all the applications are running in ring 3. Now the entire system is designed in such a way so that the privilege code or the operating system is able to access the memory and data of all other applications. However, one application is isolated from another application. That is, one application cannot invoke or access data of an other application. These restrictions are enforced by the uh, virtual memory and uh, page tables setting, while the partitions between the applications and the privilege codes are achieved by the ring architecture. Now the problem occurs when one of these applications becomes malicious and finds a bug in the operating system or the privilege code and uh, has compromised the operating system. So uh, this occurs quite often. So what we see is that uh, for example, uh, the this program is malicious, uh, it has found a bug in the operating system and it has created an exploit and has compromised the entire operating system. Now the problem over here is that since the operating system controls the entire system and can monitor or modify all applications present in that system, the result of the 
OS or the privilege code getting compromised is that all other applications present in that system would also get compromised or in other words the entire system is compromised. So, this uh, is the basic problem uh, in today's system and therefore, solving this problem wherein you run a sensitive application in the system in spite of a compromised operating system is extremely difficult. Now, another possible attack scenario is uh, due to invasive attacks. So, what happens over here is that attackers may be able to depackage uh, the processor IC and will be able to monitor internal signals within the IC. For example, if you look at these particular figure where you have the CPU, memory and the various input output and all of them share the same data and address bus. What would happen in a typical invasive attack is that the attacker would be able to monitor the address bus and the data bus and th thus gain access to maybe sensitive information that is executing in the processor. So, another recent attack is known as the cold boot attack. So, this particular attack used the fact that memory is made out of uh, DRAM or dynamic RAM and uh, the fundamental component in DRAM is the capacitor. Now, the capacitor holds charge and uh, to indicate that uh, a 1 is stored in that particular memory bit or the capacitor discharges when a 0 is present in that particular bit. Now, the problem here is that people have found out that even when the power is turned off, the state of these capacitors or many of these capacitors is still retained for certain amount of time. So, what uh, researchers have been able to do is to actually pick a DRAM uh, chip from a system, plug it into another system and uh, then scan that particular DRAM and read all the contents of that DRAM. Since a large portion of the DRAM contents is uh, still available, a lot of information present in the DRAM can be retrieved by the attacker. In the lectures that follow, we will be looking at trusted execution environments which can handle uh, these kind of attacks. So, in a typical uh, trusted execution environment, we assume that the operating system itself is compromised and thus the entire system is comp uh, may be compromised. In, in spite of this, what we would uh, what a trusted execution environment would provide is an environment where you could run sensitive applications in spite of the OS uh, being compromised. So, uh, trusted execution environments are becoming quite uh, common in the recent years and uh, finding various applications in uh, multiple uh, domains ranging from embedded systems to high performance computing. Both Intel and AMD have actually uh, created trusted execution environments in for their processors and uh, in a later lecture, we will be looking at the Intel's SGX which is the Intel's uh, trusted execution environment where enclaves are created in order to run sensitive code in spite of the entire system being untrusted. In the embedded world, ARM has introduced this uh, trust zone architecture which is stands for uh, trusted execution environments which could achieve almost the same thing. So, in the lectures that follow, we will be first looking at the ARM trust zone and then we will be looking at Intel's SGX. Thank you.